Electrophysiology is the study of the electrical signals that emanate from the heart. All of the myocardial cells within the heart are electrically active and linked together. When a signal arises from an area, it will immediately activate the surrounding cardiomyocytes in a domino or wave-like manner. The electrical activity within our hearts function in a sequential manner so that the contraction that follows will happen in a proper order. Although all the cardiomyocytes in the heart are capable of receiving and conducting electrical impulses, there are specific regions that are more electrically sensitive. These regions, known as the conducting system, can self-generate an action potential. The ability to create an action potential or electrical impulse independently without innervation is why heart transplant patients have hearts that function without having the nerves reattached. It is important to note that the role of the conducting system is to send an electrical impulse to all regions of the heart in a particular order. This electrical impulse, as is seen on an electrocardiogram, is the signal each cell needs to tell them to start contracting. The sinoatrial node is a specialized region in the superior posterior region of the right atrium. It also is called the pacemaker because this is where each heartbeat begins. The cells in this region are more permeable to sodium so that as the sodium leaks in, it causes the inside of the cell to become more positive or depolarizes until it reaches threshold and an action potential occurs. This action potential then causes the depolarization of adjacent surrounding cells in a manner that spreads throughout both the right and the left atria. The spread of the electrical activity through the atria is seen on an electrocardiogram as the P wave. Once the atria have been depolarized, the atrial cells can now contract. The impulse now also arrives at the atrioventricular node located at the inferior septal region of the right atrium. The atrioventricular node has two functions. Its main functions under normal circumstances is to relay the electrical impulse from the atria and direct it down to the ventricles via the interventricular septum. In situations where the sinoatrial node may not function properly, and does not self-create a new impulse to start a new beat, the atrioventricular node will self-generate a beat. That is its second function. It is the backup pacemaker of the heart. Like the sinoatrial node, it is also leaky to sodium, so it is self-depolarizing. However, the sodium leak is much slower than the sinoatrial node, so it takes longer to generate an action potential. Under normal circumstances, the sinoatrial node's impulse will arrive and stimulate the atrioventricular node way before it has a chance to self-generate one. Transfer from the atrioventricular node to the superior region of the septum is represented as a flat line on the electrocardiogram. The depolarizing wave through the ventricle is grouped together on an electrocardiogram as the large central spike. Upon leaving the atrioventricular node, the electrical impulse is then transferred to the bundle of His, located in the superior region of the interventricular septum. The bundle of His then transfers the electrical impulse to the left and right bundle branches in the thicker portion of the interventricular septum. Once the electrical impulse arrives at the apex, it then goes back up and all around the free walls of both ventricles in Purkinje fibers. These Purkinje fibers are what directly activate the cardiomyocytes to contract. The conduction of the electrical impulse from the bundle of His at the top of the septum down both sides is seen very clearly on an electrocardiogram as the prominent spike known as the QRS complex. In order to see the readout of the electrical impulses from the heart on a chart or computer screen, recording electrodes must be placed on the patient. These electrodes pick up the electrical changes going on inside the heart as the impulse goes through the atria, down the interventricular septum, and out to the free walls. 
any depolarizing wave traveling toward a positive electrode will result in a positive deflection on the electrocardiogram. There are two basic electrode placement patterns. Limb leads are placed on the torso surrounding the heart. Chest leads are on the chest wall immediately over the heart. For limb leads, four electrodes are placed on either the wrists and ankles or the torso where the arms and legs attach. The view of the heart and the resulting electrical signal is the same unless the patient is moving like on a treadmill. It is more comfortable and less interference if the electrodes are actually placed on the torso itself. Three of these electrodes are used for recording electrical signals and the fourth acts as a ground or reference electrode. Thus, the recording electrodes form a triangle view around the heart. This configuration is known as Einthoven's triangle. Einthoven is the Dutch physician that invented a method to record the electrical activity of the heart in 1903, for which he received a Nobel Prize. Each two electrode segment is referred to as a lead. Each lead has a negative and positive electrode. For lead one, the negative electrode is on the right shoulder and the positive electrode is on the left shoulder. Consider the activation of the sinoatrial node and the depolarization of the atria. The net direction of this depolarization is right to left, which is parallel to lead one. This results in a positive deflection. For lead two, the negative electrode is also on the right shoulder, but the positive electrode is on the left hip. The net direction of atrial depolarization pathway is right to left, which is still consistent with lead two. If you think of this as the negative side and this is the positive side, it's still going in that direction. However, the depolarization pathway is not as well aligned with lead two as it was with lead one when we look at the atria. So the positive deflection that we saw in lead one is going to be much smaller in lead two. It's still gonna be positive because we're still going left to right, but because we're a little less parallel from lead one than we are in lead two, lead one is gonna be bigger, lead two, the wave will be slightly smaller. What will be bigger is the depolarization down the interventricular septum is much more aligned in lead two, so we would expect that portion of the electrocardiogram to be much bigger. Lead three is not used as much as lead one and two. The negative electrode is on the left shoulder and the positive electrode is on the left hip. Although each lead has a different configuration, the resulting electrocardiograms are very similar. They primarily differ in wave amplitude or size. Chest leads are placed on the chest wall directly over the heart. The pattern the electrodes are placed is to maximize the coverage of the heart based on the orientation of the heart in the chest. There are six electrodes for the six leads named V1 through V6. Because these leads are so tightly associated with a specific region of the heart and thus have a different view of the heart, the resulting electrocardiogram waveform will not be the same. Consider the depolarization sequence of the interventricular septum from the bundle of his down through the bundle branches. Remember, any depolarizing impulse that is traveling toward a positive electrode will result in a positive wave. But a depolarizing impulse traveling away from a positive electrode will result in a negative wave or deflection on the recording strip. For example, Looking at V5 and V6 at the apex of the heart, the depolarization down the interventricular septum is coming toward V5 and V6 the whole time, so you would correctly guess that the resulting wave would be positive. In contrast, V1 and V2 are looking at the heart from the atria above the interventricular septum. The entire interventricular septal depolarization pathway is away from those electrodes, resulting in a negative waveform. This is just a very basic way of thinking of heart anatomy and the relationships to the electrode readings on an electrocardiogram. 
As a general rule, no matter which electrode placement pattern you use, limb leads or chest leads, the one principle stays the same. A depolarizing impulse traveling toward a positive electrode will result in a positive waveform. A depolarizing impulse traveling away from a positive electrode will result in a negative waveform.